How'd you get into baseball? And at what point did you start taking it seriously? <laughs> I don't remember how I got into baseball. I know one of my first childhood memories was throwing a baseball through a front window and getting in trouble for it. <laughs> Uh, continually playing wiffle ball in my yeah. front yard and tearing all my mom's plants up and definitely <laughs> being in trouble, you know, and then moving down to the park, uh, which was just down the hill, and all my buddies would come. We'd put the, the white tape strike zone on the wall and we'd play wiffle ball until it was dark. And, you know, so baseball's always been in my life and, um, you know, playing t ball in Little League. Um, all the way through, you know, your 12-year-old year and all stars, and uh, you know, so I, I can't remember a time in my life where I, I wasn't playing baseball. Little outfield, little first base when you were a major leaguer. I'm going to assume though, at some point, you were probably a shortstop, a pitcher, and a cleanup <laughs> hitter, right? Shortstop, catcher. Oh, Don't wow. leave catcher out. Freshman year, also tough. High school. All right. Uh, was the only kid that could really handle uh, a developed pitcher. <laughs> we'll use that word, right? That threw like 85. Right, right. So I caught. My dad was the coach. Wow. Um, and uh, all of us on that freshman team, the majority went to varsity our sophomore year. And my dad tried to stay in the dugout, and that's when we kind of butted heads. And I told him, hey, it's time for you to, to leave the dugout. <laughs> well, you ultimately go on to play at Fullerton, which I'm doing the Google Maps on you here. It was like, what, 20 minutes from where you grew up? Yeah. So in retrospect, was that the smart decision to not go away to college? You, you wanted to stay close. Well, regardless if it was a smart decision, it was probably the only decision. Oh, um, really? I was a, Yeah, I was at a small school in East Los Angeles um, that really kind of just went under the radar in terms of being scouted. Um, that being said, I got a chance to latch on with a travel ball team, uh, which were rare at the time, and was seen by the coach as, as a highly uh, competitive, you know, high risk type guy, that he had a connection with Fullerton, and that's how I was recruited. So I ended up there uh, somewhat by luck, um, but then, you know, obviously made it home. And, and uh, if I reflect on my freshman year, when you talk about it being 20 minutes away, yeah. Uh, I chose my first semester to stay at home, and that quickly changed, <laughs> and I moved right out to an apartment uh, to start the season. Yeah, a little freedom there. Yeah. Uh, your professional baseball track was pretty quick. I mean, drafted in 96, you're with the Marlins a little bit in 97. Uh, then the Padres, obviously, for a couple years after that. All this before you got to the Oakland A's. Would you say that, though, when you got to the A's, I mean, the stats suggested here, 472 games and hit 313 in 2004. Were your years with the A's the pinnacle of your career, enjoyment-wise? I know you had your family here, but... Yeah, I, th I think that's fair to say. Um, the timing of, uh, from a professional standpoint and from a family standpoint, um, really uh, was, was probably, in, it aligned perfectly. Um, I came here with an opportunity to play every day in center field. I was traded for uh, by, by a really, really solid um, everyday player in, in Ramon Hernandez uh, in that deal and, and felt like they really wanted me, they truly wanted me and I fit right into this environment. Um, we won, yep. which I had yet to, to, to accomplish in the big leagues and finished the year. At a, even though we didn't make the playoffs, we had a winning season uh, and that became what was norm. And then obviously 05, 06, finally making the playoffs in 06. Um, being a part of this that group um, kind of solidified, you know, that feeling of I, I belong here. This is my home. Yeah, and advancing around too. I know the A's yeah. were pretty yeah. excited about that. You had some back problems as a player, uh, constant, right? I mean, how'd you overcome that? Well, I wish I could say I did overcome them. Um, they, it definitely impacted my career. I uh, started in 03 with the Padres. I ran into a wall in Colorado full speed. Finished the game, went home, felt fine, and then next morning tried to get out of bed and really couldn't couldn't bear weight or, or stand up. And uh, that was the beginning of kind of this progression that I dealt with. I played healthy all of 04 by the numbers uh, came when I came here. Uh, full season, no problems. Uh, and then 05, uh, it, it started really, and it became uh, a manageable issue, um, but one that impacted my performance, no doubt. Uh, surgery in 07 here as an A, rehabbed and came back too soon, 
uh, that player mentality. I just want to be back with my team. I want to be on of the course. field. I want to compete. Yeah. Uh, and then again in 09 with, with uh, um, the Red Sox prior to the season. So took away from my ability to play every day, play the position I loved in center field. And, uh, you know, but yet I grinded through a 17-year career. Yeah. And, uh, and still very proud of, of that and the accomplishments. Favorite? Oakland teammate, I have an idea in mind, but I want to hear what you say. <laughs> There's a few of them. It's hard, uh, right, to narrow down to one. That's a, that's a it, tough question. It push. really is, but Eric Chavez was and Jason okay. Kendall. Okay. I, I mean, that it's, was it's, it. It's kind of, yep. you know, that on was par, it. those two guys. A yeah. uh, yep. special place in my heart. Yeah. Bobby Kilty. Oh, yeah. Uh, you know, Ronald McDon mean, oh, Ronald McDonald. Ronald McDonald out McDonald. here. Yeah. yeah. So, um, <laughs> we'll have to dig up that clip so people can see what we're talking about. Oh, you have to dig it up. <laughs> You've never seen Ronald McDonald and Bobby Kilty the same place at the same time. Where is Bobby? Bobby right now is this something that you think you want to see I'm not sure yeah I think he's up in the clubhouse actually right now I'm sure he'd love to see him you know I know I know Ronald McDonald is uh, Bobby Kelty's idol so uh, <laughs> I'm sure he'd love to see him so we had a classic Oakland athletic yeah. group that year yeah. in 06 we really did yeah. I mean you had characters Swish obviously yeah and, and Milton Bradley was supposed to be this piece that didn't fit right but really did yeah. I mean it was a it was a good clubhouse and honestly it it still feels like over the years that team you were on like continued to the next, to the next, to the next generation. It's always been a good clubhouse. Yeah, it really has. The culture's kind of continued forward. Um, you know, we talk about that a lot here with this group. Um, and, and, you know, you've got to be able to enjoy what you do. You've got to have some fun at the end of the day. But when you go out to, to work, it's, it's that grind, it's that grit, you know, that we, that we talk about. I've got one last playing era question for you, right? So 1914 MLB games. But if some of your current players start to look you up a little bit, like they want to see some old clips or they want to see some Kotze stats, forget all that. What do you want them to like think of you as a player? What do you want them to know you as of your of your playing career if they did look you up? You know, for me, I always played for the respect of my peers. And in that, I think uh, if you look at the, the history of, of my career, I left everything I had on the field as you know I, I um, didn't accept uh, you know or want the complacency of it I always was striving to be better at